One of the downsides of purchasing this home was there was no dedicated fiber internet connection. But as of yesterday, I now have fiber in the home and today I'm gonna to show you why I switched. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now, since moving into this home, there's been a few different internet service providers available, but they've all been coaxial or some kind of wireless system, and it just hasn't worked well. So that leads me to my first reason to upgrade to fiber, and that's having your own dedicated connection. So right here, this is where the coaxial line comes into the property. Now is how the coaxial lines work is one line will come here and then that line separates and goes to multiple houses. So if a bunch of your neighbors are using internet at the same time, it may slow down your connection and it's just not going to be as fast as it could be. So even though I'm paying for my own internet access, it kind of is a shared network, which isn't the best. Now let's move over to the new fiber line. And here is my new fiber line. So it's currently not in the ground. They're gonna come and put it in the ground in just a bit. But the cool part about fiber is it's one solid connection all the way to the hub where the internet comes from into my home. That's the conduit they're gonna put it in, but it's coming up here, it's going over here, and then into my home. Now this doesn't separate or split off at any time. You can follow this fiber optic line all the way to the main hub, which is awesome to have a dedicated connection. Let's head inside. So that line comes into the air intake here, and then it comes up right here into the ONT, optical network terminal. So this is pretty much my new modem. So this is where the internet will now come into my home. And this is provided by a company that's providing the internet into all the homes, which is a little different than the ISP. Now there may be some fiber networks that do have a shared connection, but luckily mine is a dedicated connection. Now the second reason to upgrade to fiber is to use your own equipment. Now many years ago when we purchased this home, I went out and bought my own modem, plugged into the coaxial cable here and got it set up and it started to work. But soon it automatically would reboot every hour no matter what I did. I talked to the internet service provider. They said, well, you need to use our equipment to have us come out and do some tests. So I ended up finding a different ISP at that point. Many years later, I did need to sign back up and I could have gone out and bought a modem, but I didn't want those same issues to happen. So I ended up renting a modem from them and it's costing me $14 a month to have this modem router combo. Now, most people, maybe you like having a combo, having all of that equipment provided, having it all in one, but I prefer to have my own router separate from the modem and so that I have complete control of what's going on. So with fiber, we're gonna have our ONT, and then here I have my Nest Wi-Fi router. So this is something I purchased, and then all I need to do is plug this device into here. It's going to broadcast the internet throughout my entire home, and then if you have other devices that need a direct connection, kind of like all of these here, you can plug a switch into the router to get all of them a direct connection. So let's go ahead and disconnect my old internet and we're gonna plug the new modem into the fiber. I'm plugging in the internet there and then it is going into my router that's giving all my wireless devices a connection and then this is plugged into the switch and that's the proper way to do it. You need the modem, the router, and then a switch. And so now I have full control over my internet with my own router. I don't need to pay any extra costs for this. After a year or so, you could have bought your own router that's gonna last a lot longer than that. So I highly recommend upgrading to your own equipment. Now for my brother, he actually didn't have any costs for his fiber terminal, and it's very, very small. Here you can see the difference, and then he just has his plugged right into his Google Wi-Fi, and then he has internet to his whole home. So that will definitely be different depending on the fiber network you have in your area. Now I do wanna mention that depending on the fiber provider that you have, there may be some cost to this. So I had two options. I had one where I could pay for this every month, which would be $30 a month to receive access to this, and they'll keep it updated and make sure it's always working. Now another option I had, which may not be the situation for you, was to purchase the infrastructure in the home. That way I just have a one-time fee, and then I don't have to pay a monthly fee, and it's a part of the home forever. Even if I move, the next person wouldn't have to pay the monthly fee, so I thought that might be a 
nice thing to do to increase the cost of the home a little bit. And we'll get to the full cost in just a little bit. But now let's go ahead and move on to the third reason to upgrade to fiber. Years ago when I signed up for internet, there were actually only a few different ISPs that I was able to choose from. But now with this fiber, I actually have all kinds of different internet service providers available. So the fiber connection is always going to be the same, but now I have the option to choose between different providers. Now this reason might be unique to the Utopia fiber network here in my state, but it's worth mentioning in case you do have the option in your area. So coming in here, you can see that they offer all kinds of different pricing and options, and some have some extra packages that I could choose from. So now it's kind of a pricing war between these providers because I can choose any of them. And the cool thing is I have no contract. At any time, I can cancel my provider and choose a different one and see if I like them better, which is just really nice to have instead of being locked into a contract and doing some price bartering and so on. And that leads me to my fourth reason to upgrade to fiber, and that is the cost. So right here, looking at some of these different options, uh, right here you have 250 megabits per second for $34.95 a month, or you have one gigabit for $54.95 a month. Now with my old provider, I was paying, I think around $80 a month for a one gigabit connection, but it only gave me 35 megabit upload. Now, most people probably don't need a big upload, but the great thing about fiber is you get the same download and the same upload. So in this home, I've never been able to get over 50 megabits upload, which is pretty small, and I upload really big files. The last video I uploaded was 10 gigabytes of data. So now with the fiber, I'll be paying less, and I'll be able to get more speed. Now, one other thing is my previous provider had a data limit. So if I went over my 1.25 terabytes data limit, they would then charge me $50 and then $10, so much more after that. So even though I had an $80 plan, I then added on the fee for renting the modem, and then I added on all their other taxes and stuff like that, I went over and I went to 1.5 terabytes of data. That month, I ended up spending $200 on my internet. Now, it's not like we're doing anything crazy at our home. We don't have four 4K streams running at all time. Um, we're just doing some normal internet stuff, but I was being charged so much because I went over that. Eventually, they finally called me and said, hey, we have uh, unlimited data plan that you could sign up for, and I did, but then that's an extra $11. So my ending bill is gonna be around $120 or something like that now, where I'm still getting bad service and I'm not getting the upload I want. Um, one of the other problems I've had is I think something doesn't work between my modem and the router that I've had, and my internet will just randomly disconnect. Many times during the day, I'll look over at my Google displays and they will be disconnected because my internet connection died for some reason. So I really have no control. They have came out and did everything they could to test it, but that's something that happens every day. So with cost, I'm gonna save a ton. And then again, no contract with fiber. That might depend on your area, but previously I would have to call in every year and say, hey, I want my price to be lower because everyone else is getting this great deal. You'd have to do the bartering thing, which is just not a cool thing to do. I like paying one constant price forever and I'm down with that. So that's another reason to upgrade to fiber is saving costs on the internet price. Now, if you do need to purchase some of your own equipment, it may cost a little bit more in the beginning, but over time, I definitely think it can save you money. Again, it might depend on what's available in your area. Now, the fifth and final reason to upgrade to fiber, which is really the number one reason to upgrade to fiber, is the overall speeds. So currently, I'm plugged into my existing ISP. Let's check out the speed I'm getting. Again, I pay for one gigabit down and 35 megabits per second upload. And so that's pretty good. I am directly plugged in through my switch into the router. I'm getting 457 megabits per second download. Hard to complain about that, but I am paying for a gigabit. And then here with the upload, I am getting 40 megabits per second. So I'm getting more than I pay for, that's great. Um, but when I try and upload a video and it says that this 10 gigabit video is going to take 30 minutes. And I typically want my uploads to go faster than that, so I need a higher upload. Now there's actually a few different ways in which you could do an internet speed test. So this is the best way where you're plugged directly in 
to your modem or router, but the other way is to test directly from the modem. And that will be done through the app that you use to control the modem. So here in the app, I can go ahead and do a speed test right from the gateway. That means it's what internet is coming to the gateway without going through the rest of the home. So once the test was complete, it said my gateway speed is 1,170 megabits per second, higher than what I pay for, that doesn't really happen. And then my upload is 39 with the latency of 10 milliseconds. So, okay, that's cool. The third way to test is testing from a device on Wi-Fi. So even though I'm paying for a certain amount of speed, if you're using Wi-Fi, you're not going to be getting that speed just because Wi-Fi doesn't have the capability to go up to a gigabit per second. And so here on my Note 20, my speed is 247 megabits per second down and 39.6 megabits per second up. So not terrible speeds, but I think it can get a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go switch to the new fiber network and we're gonna do the same tests. The fiber is now connected, so let's go ahead and run a speed test. And I'm paying for the one gigabit down and one gigabit up connection. And there you go. Here we have a ping of three milliseconds. Download is 778 megabits per second. Upload 871 megabits per second. And I am much more pleased with that. Now, is this a little bit overkill? Yes, yes it is. So um, really, you only need this much speed if you're using a lot of bandwidth. So if you have a bunch of different streams going on at one time in your home or a bunch of different downloads, this much speed is good for that. But if you're only using one or two downloads at the same time or one or two TVs video streaming, you probably could go with like a 250 megabits per second connection, but I'm pretty happy with this. So now let's go and do the test on the phone. And there we have it. We have a ping of four milliseconds. 331 megabits per second download and 207 megabits per second upload. I would say that's sufficient for a device on Wi-Fi. Now for the third test, there isn't a way to test directly from the fiber ONT, but is what I'm going to do is go here into my Nest Wi-Fi and I'm gonna run a speed test right here to see what speed it's getting directly at the router. And there we are at 929 megabits per second download and 836 megabits per second upload. And at the bottom here it says, this is usually enough to stream 4K video. Yeah, I would say it's definitely enough. Um, now, one thing is I can go down here and I can actually see the history of my internet speeds. So right here you can see I'm getting my new speeds and you can see the bubble size definitely bigger than the previous bubble size I was getting on my upload or download speed. So it's great to see those higher speeds and a much better internet connection. Let's try that upload again. Here I have an eight gig file. So once we select open, YouTube is then going to upload it. And so here YouTube says it's only gonna take about seven minutes to upload this eight gigabit file. So that's pretty awesome. Now is my new service going to be perfect? Probably not. Are there gonna be hiccups? Yes but I think it's definitely the way to go. If you are looking for a new internet service provider, definitely check out the fiber options in your area. And so for me to upgrade, it definitely was worth it. This is something I've been waiting on for so long, so I'm glad that it finally has happened. Now, if you have any further questions about setting up your network, please let me know in the comments below. And there's actually quite a few more people down there that are smarter about networks than me. And if you wanna see how I've set up my simple network here in the home, you can check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the,